Welcome to Voice Print with Trevor Duvall and guests. And now, your host and mine, Trevor Duvall. The thunderous applause once again heralds the arrival of yet another voice print episode. Hello, my friends, friends out there in cyberspace. This is Voice Print with Trevor DeVal and guests. I am, once again, your intrepid host, Trevor DeVal. And here we are for episode 27. 27. 27. I bet a lot of you thought... It's not going to come. I bet a lot of you thought, oh, you know what? We'll probably have to wait till Christmas or something. I'm not that lazy. I am lazy. I'm not going to kid you. I mean, I don't have to prove it. You already know how lazy I am, clearly. But uh, as I said last show, there was a number of uh, personal factors in my life over the last, last nine months that prevented me from doing a show. But we're back up and running. And are we? Off to a running start this time, let me tell you. To lead in with the next batch of voice prints, kid, I have got just just a fabulous, fabulous guest today. Why don't we play a little clip of her work? You saved my life? Uh, yeah. What about Rafra? Is he okay? Huh? Thank you. Uh, it's okay. Oh, by the way, what were you doing in there? Uh, excuse me. Uh, huh? <laughs> so, uh, sorry. I'm fine. I asked Shinozaki. Uh, is there anyone you want us to contact to let them know you're here? Mm -mm. I'll be all right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, the lovely, the talented... Kiara Zani. <laughs> what was that? I don't even know. <laughs> Neither do I. I just found it. Uh... I was making some funny sounds. Mm -mm. Oh. <laughs> yes, it was. It's a very nice clip. It for was all a kid cartoon, reason. right? <laughs> <laughs> some weird anime. I don't even know. But you know what? I bet some of the fans out there they'll be able to go. Oh, that was actually. Uh, episode yeah, I have number... no clue. <laughs> <laughs> they'll yeah. write to you. They'll write you and let me. They know. will. You know what I love about these clips? In every, virtually every single one of these clips. Brad Swale, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And he's giving his his patented Swalean effort sound. <laughs> oh, I was making sounds too, though, and they were hot tamale sounds. Mm. Oh. Oh, anime. Oh, anime. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you. Welcome to the studio, such as it is. Fancy. We don't have uh, a bunch of drunken Kirby or Sam's in here this yeah, time. Yeah, I know. But, I uh... was hoping that wasn't going to happen. But, uh, <laughs> it's good. I'm with you, and I'm, I'm excited. And I'm excited, too. We've uh, we've tried to get you on the show here. Here are the yeah, producers yeah, and I. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every, this, I have a little thing to go do it with you. Everybody's lovely and talented. I was reading. It was like Kathy was like, lovely and talented. So-and-so, lovely and talented. And Kiara's adding, lovely and talented. So you haven't been trying to get me. We're all lovely and talented, right? All right, all right. I need two other words to describe me okay, besides I'll, lovely. All right, I'll tell you what. I'm going to, everybody just pretend that that introduction never happened. Yes, here we go. And I'm, because, you know, I, I never edit anything. So let's let's pretend that that never happened. And I'm going to go back and I can reintroduce yeah. our guest. Okay, everybody, okay. here we go. Here we go. <clears throat> I, and in true anime fashion, I'm going to beep us in. Okay, oh, here okay. we go. Ready? Beep, beep, beep. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, the lovely, the talented, the smoking hot. Oh! <laughs> you should have seen the eyes I was giving you. I was like, wait, that's lovely and talented. I don't want to hear I'm lovely and talented. Kathy Westlock and everybody else was lovely yes, and Yes, but you're the only guest, I promise smoking you, who's hot. been smoking hot. So I'm there you put go. put that one on the wall, people. <laughs> I haven't been feeling smoking hot lately, so all this is a oh, good day. My, you're making you know, me feel good. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. She's, she looks as sexy as she sounds, that's so much. kids. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. <laughs> I sound like I'm 12. That's not... <laughs> well, then, well, that's okay. You know, I don't mind. The, there, there's the Richard I Cox's I did get ID voice. the other day for buying... I have a lot of uh, scratch and win thing, okay? I like set for life. I haven't won yet. <laughs> but I got ID the other day. I was like, super cool. I was like, tell Kelly made my day. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. And you have to be 18. Okay, I know I don't look 18. Well, you're very, you're, you're but very I'm not youthful. ID'd. I think it's the voice. I haven't been ID'd since I was about seven. 
Because I came out of the womb with a beard, a cigarette, and a rum and coke. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> pretty much came out. Anyway, let's get okay, on with the yes. show <clears throat> and uh, have a look at your history. Yes. And now, Voice Print with Trevor DeVal and guests presents In Memoria. A history of our guests' long and faithful service to the cause of voice acting. Very, very official. Very, very official sounding. We are getting down to business. As uh, my loyal and devoted listeners know, I go on IMDb and I pull up a list of what people have done or what IMDb has claimed. Yeah, that because done. The ad, that's like maybe twenty percent of actually what I've done. <laughs> I know, and and oftentimes I know with mine they get it wrong. This is sort of a yes, running joke. But if you try to put stuff in that you've actually done, they say no. I know. They say, "Excuse me, who are you? Yeah, please." Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> there's a bunch of here. I'm just going to go okay. through. They, they list them from most, most recent okay. to uh, not recent. Okay. The first one here, and we're not going to go through all of them because we'd God. be here all week. You, uh, you. you. Stop it. <laughs> uh, Barbie, a fashion fairy tale. Okay. Yeah. Well, Barbie, you, there's a number of Barbies here. I've done, very, I've done a lot, actually. A lot of Barbies. My favorite one was Barbie Mermedia. Merme- and who did you play in that? Um... Some chick. No, there was. She had a great name. I just can't remember it <laughs> right about now. It might come up. It but might I got come to, up later. I was a mer. Like I, I could swim. You know, mermaid. Yeah. Cool. A swimming Barbie. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, they sink to no. That was my no favorite. Level. But I have done a few. So that I guess that's my latest. And it is. It says 2010. Woo! So that would be this time. <laughs> Barbie is my white whale. I and not nothing about her weight. Oh, but yeah. the show Barbie is my white whale because I can't get on it. I wonder why. I suck. And I've I've apparently There's sucked for years. There's always a prince or I know, a handsome. I know. Well, I know. I don't play the handsome guy very often. That's see. so odd. I know. I know. Me and Sam. It's it's our white. It's it's our white well <laughs> together. <laughs> I've got a lot of those. <laughs> Barbie, they like me. Thank God. They do apparently because you've got a whole bunch. Yes. What is this River World? Is this a that TV was a, show? Yes, it's an on-camera sci-fi miniseries. Oh, cool! Now you've yeah. done a number of on-camera stuff. We're yes. going to sort of get to these I as get we to go. Do both, yes. Yeah, Kiara is one of the the very versatile uh, voice actors who also is is a real actor. <laughs> I wouldn't She's call real. it a real. I think what you know what voice acting to me is one of the hardest crafts there is. I have superb on-camera actor friends who come to me and say, "Oh, I see you do both. I'd love to do it." They don't know what the hell they're doing when they get into uh, in front of a microphone. There's a craft, so don't say that we're not great actors well, as voice people. <laughs> I, I agree. It's, I think it's actually <laughs> even harder. I think it is too. And there's yeah. I've I've said many times I think on the show too about how uh, on camera people will come into an audition and they'll go to do the audition yeah. and they just flatline they because tank, yeah. they're great in the world of the very small or yeah. the extreme close up. But it's but, bigger, yes. Yeah, you know the yeah. uh, anyway. Anyway. So yes, I get to do both, and I trust me on this. I tell God and, or whoever every day how blessed and grateful I am to be doing both. I thought I heard something. I kept yeah, hearing this me. little Oh, that was you. You know what? I shouldn't oh. say this, but I'm totally going to. Every time I do a voice job, it's like, you know, we all have, um, what's the word? Um, we do something. Like it's superstitions? Superstitions. Yeah. I do a smiley face, and I say thank you on every recording script, whether it's just a, a radio ad or it's, you know, me and you working prelay or an, whatever it is. I always do a smiley face and a thank you on any page just because I feel so blessed to be in this community. It's to me, the most kick-ass job in the world. And yes, on camera is great, but voice world, <laughs> there's nothing finer. So I, I always do this smiley face thank you on every one of my little scripts. To give back do karmically you... <laughs> to the universe. We always put this smiley face to do give back. Do you do it, do? <laughs> do you do it? Do you I steal do, me? I do. I thank nobody. I'm very I ungrateful thank... bastard I am. <laughs> I don't know who I'm thanking, but I'm thanking the No, universe. it's me. It's me. You don't know okay, it's me, but right. you're actually... So, you know what? You're welcome, honey. Thank you. Okay, good. Great. Okay, go on. Here's one of my favorites, and not just because it's really the first time we work together. <gasps> Zeke's pad. It actually is. If you if there's a question about what has been my latest and greatest favorite um, voice job, it's been Zeke's pad. Zeke's pad, for those of you who have seen it, or for those of you who haven't seen it, for those of you who have seen it, you know what it's about. <laughs> those of you who haven't seen, seen it, it, it's... Uh, it's about this guy who like draws pictures on yeah. this little pad, and they, it's sort of he changes reality basically. Yep. Uh, and Kiara is the sister, uh, whose name is uh, uh, Rachel. 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 Rachel Palmer. And what is your character? The one, the older brother, because he makes me laugh my face <laughs> off. Ike. 
I, oh my I, god! Ike, the older I, brother, sort of me yeah. channeling Mad Hill. You yeah, Ike, the older brother. Hey, okay, guys, <laughs> well, it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> I had so much fun in that cartoon because I just sit there and watch you and laugh. <laughs> And well, that's a compliment. I will thank you. I'll say, but you know, really, it was Tabitha who always makes me yeah. laugh because there she was a very small cast things. on that show. There very was, small. There was Michael who plays the lead guy, mm-hmm. and then Tim who plays sort of the best friend, mm-hmm. and then you, and then Tabitha and I basically play the rest of the world. <laughs> the rest of the fun. world, and me and Tim would be the little tiny, small, quiet creatures in the corner <laughs> watching Trevor and the Tabitha show because they each had like eight characters per show, and me and Tim would just read our books and then stand up for our one or two lines and then get back down. And I always thought that you didn't like me because you would you so would serious. sit there and you very serious remember I yeah. would tease you about that yeah. or how serious you are because yeah. you know you wouldn't you wouldn't actually take part in the jokes and I was like Why because I'm not funny play? but you are funny I'm you're just funny. very funny I keep it inside um, <laughs> no that was one of my favorite jokes just watching and the stories we won't go into the stories but each week Trevor would have a story about can I say uh, yeah, it I would a it. lady and I would just be sitting back in awe going how the hell does he do it I mean I'm single so I could really I was like I'm not meeting men like you're meeting women there was the car dealerships there was all over the place and I would go home and I'd be like mental note you need to go to a car dealership this weekend that okay now I know you you thought that so I, I thought, was some, Mr. some traveling sort of pants big, yeah <laughs> Mr. Studley it got a new woman each week I was excited week. to see what was what I was gonna hear I was channeling Kirby I must okay, admit for okay. a while but honestly honestly that stuff never happens happened. to me. The only time that stuff ever happened was when I would Z-Spat. the night before I go to a Zeke's yeah. show and there would be that was the weirdest thing of all was I what, what Kiara is talking about is I go to lease this car and at the dealership the woman who's running the lease she comes she, on, she yeah. comes on yeah. to me and yeah. she's fairly good looking. So he's gonna, she's gonna go on a date. I think what the hell yeah. and I do and well, that was a mistake. But, you know, it's but made there for was a, good a story. lots of dates, not just the car dealership That's... woman. I can't remember them all. I remember her in detail. Can but... I, apparently. <laughs> So maybe that's why it was my favorite job because I I got to hear about your, your dating life. <laughs> the, uh, the the many women of Trevor Duvall. <laughs> <laughs> there is a phrase you'll never hear uttered anywhere else. Um, here's another big one: uh, Stormhawks. Stormhawks is Storm super Hawks fun. Piper. Another cool cast. I got to work with Sammy, who's one of my. You're, you're my first favorite. Oh, Sammy's my second. And then I guess I have to tie the Maddie's also my favorite. Yes. So the two to combine. And Colin, you know what? That was one of, another great show. And, and I got to be the token girl with these guys. And right, the Princess fun. Leia character. Yeah, and they, it was fun. And that's another Nerdcore show. And Nerdcore, they did, I played uh, Piper, and we did... We did a lot. We did maybe 52 episodes. Yes, yes. And it's still airing. And It is. It's a very, very popular show. Oh, good. Because I think it's fantastic. <coughs> I don't think it did well in the States, but it did well, I think, in Canada and, and well, in Britain. I think Stormhawks did better in the States than most of Nerdcore shows because they did oh. uh, Dragon Booster. Yeah, it didn't do well. Yeah, we didn't really do so well with yeah, that one. Uh, uh, Stormhawks, League of Super Evil, they're doing a second yeah. season, so they're obviously doing well yep. somewhere. Um, what else did they do? Uh, uh, Hot Wheels, Battle Force 5, oh, I, I think, don't is know there. Where... We're uh, doing one right now, t- a Team Awesome, right. and it's supposed to be in the States on Disney, but um, I hope it does air because it's a funny show. Well, it's a really funny we shall show. see. I, Nerdcore is sort of dead to me. Yeah, you, it's the, the whale, what do we call it? Well, it's not, see, that's the thing. It's not oh. my white whale because I did, you know, 40 episodes of Dragon Booster for them, and I go in every time to audition for these things, and I'm there you. for the, the callbacks, and it's between me and three, but it's... It's never me <laughs> after all I these shows. Why? I don't know. I don't know what it is. But Ace always says, "Oh no, yeah, Dre's my go-to guy." Really, really, you can't even throw me a guest star bone. Then I'm gonna knock on wood because that Mr. Ace has been very good to me. So yes, I'm yes. grateful. Yes, he has the right. Stop it! <laughs> you have other people that are good to you. I do. I do. Yeah. People are good. People are good to us. Let's yes, just, they are. Let's just say. Uh, Smallville, of course, everybody well, knows Smallville. Yeah, Superman. Yeah, I did, I did an episode of that there. Uh, this caught my eye, and I'm not sure why. Holly and Hal Moose, our uplifting Christmas I adventure. I loved that cartoon. That was a Sammy. <laughs> oh. And we played brother and sister. Holly and it's a Moose. Chris, uh, Holly Moose. And it's based on an, actually a really popular children's book. Ah. And you know the, that company that does the Build-A-Bear? 
um, you know, do we I? can go into a store and build a bear and make oh, yeah, say yeah, yeah, something yeah. Yeah, and that. dress it. Do, yeah. It's that company. And so um, it was a really popular uh, Christmas story that this past Christmas. Huh. It did really well. And we had dolls made from me and Sammy. And I brought him one back from the <laughs> States. I was like, here you go, Hal. He kind of looked at it and was like, <laughs> what this? do you want me to do with this? <laughs> so that was fun. Yeah. Uh, what else? we got? About a girl. Now About this was a, yeah. a big deal for you. It was. It was huge. <coughs> I, oh, you, yeah. No, is sorry. It out? Is it out? <laughs> <laughs> Very About a girl was a dream come true. It was a half hour scripted on camera comedy show. It, it was for younger, like you know, high school, college kids, and it was me. It was about a girl, and that was me <laughs> some... living with four boys in college. Ooh, Not any saucy. Well, actually, I did. I had a crush on one of the characters in the show. But... Sounds very wholesome. Yeah, it was very, it was very wholesome. It was a blast. It was for me. I've always been that girl that um, I love acting. I, I really do. But if I had to choose which kind of genre I would like to stick in, it would, even though I, I keep telling you I'm not funny, I would like to stay in the comedy side because I've done so much crying and being killed and murdered and tortured and so many on-camera things. It's, it's tough. It's, it's time tough. for some laughs. I got to say, when I, I looked at your demo, your your video, like your oh, okay. actor on-camera demo, oh. and the scenes where you're crying, I, I couldn't. It They're just, hard. It breaks my heart. Yeah, just you got to go to dark the, places. I want I want to go crawl into that yeah. screen. I want to... Rattle a guy making you cry. I want to <laughs> teach this guy. This will guts. Teach this guy. So no, there was no crying on about a girl. It was just fun, fluffy stuff. Well, well, good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, sushi good, pack. Sushi. Oh, uh, that was good. Some sushi. Ricky Sprocket. Yeah, of course. That was fun. Some Ricky Sprocket. Yeah. Uh, good luck, Chuck. On camera, I got to be in a movie with uh, Dane Cook. Do you know the comedian yes, Dane Cook? Yes, yes. Yeah, I got uh, a, a few nice scenes with him. Apparently in, in the, the French-Canadian title was La Porte Bonheur. 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 <laughs> uh, Supernatural, another big show. That was a great show. That's where I had to go to dark places for that role. Right, Ooh, for Supernatural. Very dark oh. places, yeah. I, I, it's it's sort of an X Filesy kind of show, isn't it? Yeah, about... it's very dark, yeah. and that's on my demo reel where cool. I'm crying, and the guy's like wants me to jump off. Oh, the that one! Yeah. That's the one I wanted that to reach in and go. Yeah. What are you doing to Kiara? Stop mm-hmm. it at once! That's why I can't watch people I know on camera because I can't see I the know. character, and I, I just see the, the actor, and I just want to say, "What are you that doing to them?" It was a tough them? shoot. It was like four in the morning. <laughs> we're in the Capilano River, and then I had to stand on the edge of this dam. Oh, Lord. I caramba! Yeah, no fun. I caramba! Uh, another Barbie. Barbie in the twelve dam. Dancing princesses. I love that one. <laughs> uh, here's one that's close to my heart. Oh. Stargate Atlantis. Oh. You did a Stargate Atlantis. I, that was fun, actually. That wasn't a tough job, to be honest. There was a hot, hot gentleman that I had to play his wife. And you know, maybe a little kiss here and there in that oh, scene. Well. That wasn't a rough day at the office, <laughs> let me tell you. I was the voice of... Um, I was voice of little alien helms, helmsman Hermiod on the on the oh, ship. Oh, on the ship there, but uh, no, no kissing for me. Yeah, just that a was of... a fun on camera day. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Oban Star Racers, uh, you did some Weren't work you on. Were you in that? I was. Oh. Uh, I played several characters on that, and I forget who they were. Um, <laughs> I think I was Molly. She was the lead character. Was the... her name Molly? Yes, there yeah, it is. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. <clears throat> there it is. And uh, trolls. Trolls some, was fun. Some, uh, yeah. Some, some Paul trolls. Quinn. We love Paul Quinn. Uh, My Little Pony, a very minty My Christmas. Little pony. Yep. My Little Pony. I have to tell you this. Actually, I have to show you. This is fantastic. I was telling a story, I don't know, on one show about how, like in one of these shows, about how I want, <laughs> I was in the waiting room at Coco or something, and <clears throat> all the girls were in there, and they were about yeah. to do a My Little Pony, and... I came in and I was like, why are there never any boy roles in this thing? I, I said, I'll tell you what, I gotta write a new character in this script called Warhorse. <laughs> and he's just big and he steps on all the ponies. You anyway, so this this uh, this person sent me a picture that, that they drew of Warhorse. War Horse. So cool. I have it. I'm gonna try and put it up on the website because it was great. And it had a little tat, like a brand, which is cool. my face. <laughs> it's on its flank. <laughs> Aww, no, you, th- there was never any boys when I did it. Uh, you're right. Yeah, very sexist. Very sexist show. Edgemont. Edgemont. On camera series. I did that for five years. Yes, 53 episodes according to yeah. uh, the list here. When did I start? Oh, I was a young wee lad. 2001. 
Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Just a baby. And speaking of babies, baby Looney Tunes. That was fun. But that was with Sammy again. The, yes, Sam who played virtually everybody. Yeah, uh, he was like four characters. <laughs> Bugs and Daffy. And... I was baby Petunia, <clears throat> the baby pig. Right. Yeah. Um, 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 another Barbie, Fairytopia. Yeah, love uh, it. Uh, in the This is a big one. Is this it? Is, oh, yes, the oh. fan. This is a massive show. And, I'm two uh, characters on that, but I think my character just died the uh, last... Oh. Oh, sh- <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Kirby spilled the beans. He already spilled the beans that we're doing it again. Oh. <laughs> we were supposed to talk about it. <laughs> well, maybe... She, no, actually, she. there was a question mark on there, Carl, the lovely, fantastic director. The lovely and talented yeah. and, and lovely and hot. And lovely and smoking hot Carl Williams <laughs> said, I'm not sure if she... So it's true. I don't know if this character You never does. do know. You yeah. never do know. Uh, Yura of the Demon Hair, apparently, was your character. Or Yura of the Hair. No. Yes. <laughs> I know infant is one, uh, and then there's another Hakudoshi. one. Hakudoshi is another. Well, it says you're the hair. So sure, I, I, I'll take that. Hey, if it's written down on IMDb, you it's did it, correct. pal. <laughs> uh, what else? What else we got here? Ark, another one close to my heart because, of course, this was the first time you and I actually worked together. Although we didn't actually work together no, in the I same studio. No, I don't remember studio. actually having you. But because that was a movie with James Woods. Yes. And he was the big good guy, Huge. and you were his daughter in that, and Kirby. Once was again, the with the love interest, and I was the he big bad all the guy. Girls, right? uh, yes, kissed all the girls. Yeah. I was the big bad guy in that bear Amanda. Was that our first job together? That was the first wow. time we worked together. Uh, we did some anime stuff. Yeah. We've been in the same anime shows, mm. but that was the first time we actually had any scenes together, even that though we weren't actually one. in the studio. That was a great how one. Did it, how did it do? I don't. Uh, not maybe well, so I just got a fan mail about this a few weeks ago, so apparently it's still out there. Okay. Um, you know what I loved about that show, what? and I can't remember if I've talked about this in the show or not before, but. That was the classiest closing credit sequence I've ever seen. What did they do? I've I, never seen it. I'm going to have to show you oh, please, because it's please, fantastic. Please. They they treat us like big shots. They treat us like we get full title cards at the end. And it, i I got to show you. you. It's fantastic. Okay. Uh, what else we got here? Zoid's Fuhrers is another show that we actually... Bionicle, Mask of Light. Ah, uh, yes, that's yeah, a good one. It's another one we worked together okay, on. Okay, so apparently. that wasn't our first then. <laughs> I guess not. Yeah, I guess not. X, X-Men 2! Yeah, the that movie. was fun. I remember that now. I was the opening girl. I was the White House tour guy. That's right. And I did the little speechy speech at the beginning. Yes, I remember going, who's that lovely and talented tour guide? <laughs> and smoking hot. <laughs> and smoking hot. Hello. Okay. <laughs> uh, what have we got to... Oh. Here, another huge one. Another huge one. Hamtaro. Oh, Hamtaro. And you were Hamtaro. Were you on Hamtaro? I was. I was Conrad, who was the father of one of the main girls. And somebody else. Yeah, that was... I'm I'm not going to lie. Thank God for Carl Williams, because Hamtaro, you got to love him, but he talked a lot. And he made a lot of sounds. And so for... How many episodes did Uh, we do? This would have been... It was crazy. Like a hundred and something. Yeah. Maybe 200. I it was it was hard all these sounds and talking like every episode I'd be like Carl how many lines do I have he'd be like, I oh, I don't want to tell you and they'd be like in the hundreds each wow. episode it was wow. it was hard so I couldn't you, speak the after were each you doing episode. a really high pitch thing for what it what was or? I doing him ha it's him Taro here and he's always really talking loud oh my <laughs> lord he was screaming in every single episode wow because he was always escaping from Laura and then going on his little travels and by the end of uh, 200 lines I couldn't speak wow but it was you know it was still fun well we must suffer for our art Carl (laughs) thank god for Carl I got through it X-Men Evolution another one close to my heart Jubilee Jubilee Jubilee. I, I think I shot fire that was my talent Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, they all have talents, right? Uh, they do. Superpowers. Hello, the <laughs> X-Men. They're mutants, not talents. Please. Okay, I'll get it right. <laughs> Another one. Soul Taker. You probably don't even remember Soul I Taker. I don't even remember what it is. But I remember Soul <laughs> Taker. It's the first time I played the Han Solo character. I'm very, very impressed okay. with myself for that. But this isn't about me. <laughs> no. Yet I always manage to make it about me. Yes. Stop it. <laughs> what about Mimi? Oh, I loved What About Mimi. Many years ago, that I one. I played Mimi. She Mimi? was fun. You were Mimi. And, and now my mom has named her cat Mimi. Look at that. So what about Mimi. Is the real question. She was just kind of fun. Oh, my runaway imagination. She always sang. Nice. Um, and my mom, she named her cat Mimi. And there it is. Yeah. Uh, Cold Squad, which is a popular oh, show right. here. Oh, right. That was on camera, right? Uh, Breaker High. That was one of my very first on camera. <laughs> and I had a huge crush on who is now a huge mega, mega star, Ryan Gosling. Oh, was Hello? he on that? Yes. In my <laughs> wow. scene, I, I had to, like, you know, flirt with him. 
And now he's, I have a huge crush on him. Huge wow. Huge crush. He's a major star. Wow. Yes, now he is. My Little Pony Tales. Yep. 1992, is yeah, that right? A series. How old were you? Like one? Uh, I was like, um. <laughs> well, you know, you don't have to yeah, answer that's, that. That's not. But that's you not. were young. I was very, very young. young. You were an itch in your daddy's pants, as they say. I think my very first job, I was eight. Let's put it that way. Well, you've had a long and illustrious career. And uh, I want to talk more about how you got into it. And I want to talk more about uh, some entertaining stories from the world of showbiz. Because I'd really like to know what's, what it's like to be in showbiz. You're not missing much. <laughs> but before we talk about that, we're going to take a little break. So, don't go anywhere. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Frederick Von Fiddlefapper reporting to you live from Grover's Mill, New Jersey, where there seems to be a crash site for a gigantic unidentified flying object. Witnesses saw a huge fireball hurling across the sky at breakneck speed, which then plowed straight into the middle of the town square. I now have with me Dr. Bruhaha, professor of all things geeky. Tell us, Doctor, is this the first sign of intelligent alien life from another galaxy? Well, this appears to be a gigantic and Antenna, meant to spread news about video games, cartoons, anime, movies, technology into the atmosphere. And it is called the Big Bald Broadcast. Tell us, why do you call it that, Doctor? It says right there in huge letters. What, are you an idiot? Swinefoot. <laughs> Thank you very much, Doctor. I'm absolutely speechless right now, ladies and gentlemen. This Big Bald Broadcast is having a bizarre effect on the townspeople, including yours truly. I have the sin- Minister urge to tune my web browser over to bigballbroadcast.blogspot.com and download the latest geeky news with hosts, voice actor Kyle Abair and musician Otherworld Steve. I'll also have to check for daily nerdy news links on twitter.com slash bbbroadcast. Now, if you'll excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go get an iPhone and fondle it. Settle in. This could be a long one. If you're anything like me, you like to capture the precious moments in your otherwise banal existence. I photograph and videotape every little minute detail of my life, from my wedding, honeymoon, first child's birth, vacation at Disney World, baby's first steps, son's first birthday, baby daughter eating peas and making a stupid face, nativity play, daughter's first day of kindergarten, 3D baby taking a bath in a tub, daughter playing frisbee with a dog, taking the family to mini golf, son's graduation from grade two to grade three, family picnic, family sitting around watching TV, daughter's wedding, birth of grandchild. (laughs) But between taking Taking the photos and downloading and adding them to Facebook and MySpace, I realize I've spent so much of my time documenting my life that I miss the whole experience. That's why I just love my new iMember, the latest innovation from Apple. I just place the iMember in my artificial eye socket in my forehead, and iMember remembers my life for me. Then, when I'm on my deathbed and I finally have the time to upload my life, I easily remove iMember from my face and insert it into the eye slot that's been conveniently slotted into the base of my cerebral cortex at the top of my spine, upload my experiences, and enjoy my life. Just like that. Ah, Wow, that was a pretty good life. The Apple Eye member, improving the species one innovation at a time. You're listening to Voice Print with Trevor Duvall and guests. Karazani is our guest today on episode 27 of Voice Print with Trevor Duvall and guests. Ooh, I love the number 27. Is that your favorite number? One of. Why? I just love, se- oh, you know, lucky number seven. Good things happened to me when I was 27. You know, the age 27 typically is an age where. Uh, is an age of great change ah. where a lot of people... It was they, a huge change. Me too. Massive <gasps> reevaluation of cool. my life. Massive, like, reassessment of priorities. I bought my condo when I was 27, and my apartment number has... I'm not going to tell you the address, but it has the... <laughs> my apartment number has the words 2 and 7 in there. So it was kind of... It was funny. It yeah. was karmic. There was something going on. <laughs> the stars were aligned. I like the number 27. Yes, it was... A very good, good year. year. It was a good year. So, Kiara Zani. Yeah, darling. Smoking hot that you are. Smoking hot, that's it. That's what you can call me from now on. <laughs> 
Sauce, apparently, is what I'm calling yeah. it from now on. Yeah, <laughs> I know. That's our thing that's, that's little... as free people. His name is Boss. <laughs> my name is Sauce. It's a, it's a long story, kids. I kind of like it, though. It's kind of cool. Yeah. I like having Sauce. little pet names. Boss. Sauce and Boss. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. sweetheart. Yes, darling. How did you get in this crazy business? This is actually a funny story. Okay. I know you need 10 minutes for well, it, you so got I'm going to condense it. Um, I was one of those kids that was always performing, you know, the one that's like, shut up already, singing and <laughs> dancing. Mom's like, we're in a store, you can't keep singing. And we were in the mall, and I was singing and dancing, and I saw the sign that said, search for a star. And underneath it said, prizes, prizes. And one of the prizes was to fly to L.A. to meet, I'm not sure if you remember the show. It was called Punky Brewster. With of course. Moon Fry. She was one of my idols. Because I was like seven, <laughs> and she was like two years older, and she dressed funky, and I wanted to be Punky Brewster. You remember how she wore like a tie and different yeah. color yeah, socks? Yeah, yeah, Full on 80s. I dressed like Punky Brewster. <laughs> and so I was like, Mom, this is, I can meet Punky Brewster. What do I got to do? And she's like, well, you got to sing and dance. And I'm like, I can do that. So I sang and danced, and I won Search for a Star. And I didn't care about all of the other prizes. I just wanted <laughs> to meet my producer. But one of the prizes was an agent. Oh, wow. And at the time, it was a kid's agency called Ramona Beauchamp. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> my very first audition was for a cartoon called Little Golden Bookland, and I booked the part of Pokey Little Puppy. And how old were you at that time? Eight. I did eight the contest at seven, old. and then I, wa I booked this job at, at eight. Wow. And I still remember the song that I had to sing, and I know I'm not going to sing, but it was. I never, I never forgot that role. Wow! And it was with Marsha Goodman at Deke, and she's no longer doing stuff. Right. But she, I continued to work for Deke for quite, quite so many. Years. So your first exposure to the business after the whole was cartoons. Was cartoons? Yep. So you and I haven't stopped since. Cartoons have has, has kept me going from the age of yeah. eight. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, there are... Uh, and I was like, what is this world? It was amazing at this age. You just stand in front of a microphone and sing. And it's like, pretty I can good. do this. It's pretty good. Yeah. I, and not a lot of people come immediately into cartoons, especially as yes, kids. Yes, they kind of have to work into it. Yeah, or they fall into it from comedy yeah. or from theater no, or something I like totally that. No, I totally lucked out. Wow. So then uh, from there you decided, I am going to be, a, I'm an actor. Yeah. I want to be, a, and I want to be a thespian. Yeah. Uh, did you do any stage work? Or no. Did you, no, no. No, no stage work. I did commercials because I wasn't into the whole on camera thing till I was in my teens. Right. I did animation from eight till about 16. And then at 16, I don't know what I was thinking, but I was thinking I want to try the on-camera. So I, <laughs> I did, got an agent for on-camera work. And slowly but surely, that took, you know, it took time. Mm -hmm. But the voice world was always good to me. So uh, you never took any formal training of any sort? No. You were just, you were a natural kid. I kind of was. No, I don't know. You kind of are. I don't know. I just kind of, I've always been the girl that I, I remember sitting in my parents' backyard with a garbage bag and cutting it up with scissors and making an outfit out of a garbage bag. <laughs> so I'd have like a bikini top and a garbage bag and then, and then I'd put on shows for the neighbors and my mom would be like, please, Kiara, like, I think they're getting tired. I'm like, nope, I've got a new outfit this week and I've got a new ensemble and a, a number. And You're it was gonna always a garbage it. bag. It was always a garbage bag. You know, I have one here. Maybe <laughs> if you wanted to, you know. My mom didn't, that didn't have much money, so I wish she wasn't going to give me fabric. So she gave me <laughs> those green, really big garbage bags. I can bring you a picture to show uh, you. I need to see I will bring you a picture, picture the next time we work. It was just basically like a bikini, so a tube top here and then what covered down there. And I usually made a fancy hat out of the garbage bag, too. Wow. And I don't know what I sang. It was probably something with Madonna because she was always my favorite. <laughs> Holiday! <laughs> okay, Kiara, stop it. You're not doing the garbage bags. Okay, next question. Wow. Yeah. Kiara's awkward confession right here. <laughs> it's not awkward. It's just it's what I did as a kid. I know, sorry. Okay. Wow. So, okay. So, you, you got in the voice world. Yep. Uh, you uh, uh, got over your uh, uh, garbage bag wearing yep. fetish. Yep. Uh, I was like, now I can actually make money at this. Forget about it. <laughs> I'm not going to wear a garbage bag. I can buy some bag. <laughs> and real clothes like for a human girl. I know. I was like, wow, I don't have to wear two different color socks now. I can actually <laughs> buy the same colored socks. <laughs> uh, so, what was your first? on camera thing were your first sort of big... my first on camera was um made for tv movie based on the musical bye bye birdie 
Oh, Do you wow. remember Bye Bye yes. Birdie? Bye, bye, bye. So I booked quite a nice, actually, a lovely part. Um, and I got to sing and dance with Jason Alexander, Vanessa Williams, oh, wow. China Phillips. And we recorded a CD. Wow. It was pretty cool. How was Jason Alexander? He was funny. I, I know you love Seinfeld. Bit of a Costanza I know. Freak. He was pretty funny. He was kind. They were all really good. He's at a, he is an old school musical. Th- he's an old school song and dance old guy. Sc- yeah. So he did a lot of singing and dancing in that. So that was my first on camera. Wow. It was quite, it was quite big. I'll never forget that. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. And uh, so what are you working on right now? Right now, darling. Well, I'm doing Team Awesome. Yes. As I just told you. Um... What else am I doing? I'm, I know I'm doing I'm not a very good person. To, we've, we talked about this off air. I don't I don't give myself, you know, the whole, oh, this is what I'm doing. Uh, and here, watch me, watch me. <laughs> uh, I'm not one of those gals. Um, what am I doing? I'm doing a lot of voice. Like, I, I'm the voice of um, Saskatchewan's, you know, Telesears, uh, the radio oh, ad. Yeah, yeah. Radio company. Yeah. In Saskatchewan, it's called Sastel. Oh. So I'm, I've been there. You're the Sastel Sastel lady woman. for like two years. Actually, I'm not a woman. I'm, I'm called Little Red, although she doesn't sound like that. <laughs> um, her name's Little Red. And I'm the voice of Little Red. So I've been doing that for like two years. And they're fantastic because I do all their... Um, Radio, TV, uh, internet. So do you do a lot of commercials as a rule? I do. I like them. I did one this morning. You did one too. Uh, we kind of missed one. each other. <laughs> but uh, they're fun. Yeah. You know, 30 second spot. Yeah, in you and go out, in, bada bing, bada bing, bing, bing. I was so pleased today because it was a the BC Hydro this commercial. This is what it was, yes. And I walk in there and it's uh, me and Sam and Brian Drummond. How fun so, is that? Just the balls back together for, yeah. a, for a little radio spot. I got to uh, work with this cute girl, Adrian, and we, I, in the spot, I had to show it, pretend that I was getting married. It was fun. We get to be girls for 30 seconds. Yeah, it's I love it. I love it. So I do lots of on camera stuff. Um, and then, series wise, we just wrapped something, didn't we, or no? Uh, series wise. Well, we, I was, I came on as Fiona on that cute little oh, show. Oh, of course. Of yeah. course. And I can't, that's not on here. Yeah, that's another. Hello, we kid versus cat. We stood cat. next to each other we at the, the microphones. How that, could you forget I, well, about it? Hey, I didn't forget. <laughs> it's IMDb again. Go screw it up. I know, crap. So we just dropped that. And then I was in LA for quite some time, so I kind of took myself out of the equation right. in Vancouver. And but you now still kind of go back and forth and back a little and bit forth, now. Back and forth, back and forth. Like a big shot. Yeah, like a big shot. Well, well, trying to be. You know, uh, I might be calling you while you're down Why? there because... Uh, David Kay is going to be a guest on the show, and <gasps> oh. I'm I'm still thinking I might actually go to LA to uh, to do the interview you as should. opposed to just sca- uh, a Skype thing. I'll so be there it, in January. Okay. For sure. Well, if I'm there when you're there, yeah. you can you can show I'll me show the, the town because I really don't know LA that well. I know it well, and I don't live in LA when I'm there. I'm always in Santa Monica, which is gorgeous. It's Santa kind of, it's like living in Vancouver. Right. You're at the water. Right. It's fa- it's fantastic. Right. Forget about it. And the economy is fantastic in California, from what I hear. <laughs> <laughs> so, can you think of any sort of favorite moments in your career that sort of leap out, or, or interesting moments, or even even touching moments? Anything at all? Like, uh, well, let me ask you this: Do you oh. do any conventions? Do you do? Any, no, I've never. I'm a convention rookie. You've have you done any conventions? I've been asked, but I'm too. I'm I'm afraid. I say no. Oh, oh, yeah. okay. Now yeah. I'll tell you what. Next what? time they ask you to do one, you say. Maybe if you're there, I'll go. Uh, you tell them. You say I'll go if Trevor, if Trevor goes. I'm and scared. I hear all go, these stories oh, about fun. people coming up to you and attacking you. <laughs> no, they don't really attack anymore. They, uh, uh, I got a disease once from a fan, <laughs> but that's a whole other, <laughs> what we called con eye. Oh, because, con eye? Yeah, because the, what is it? Well, they wear, uh, the fans like to wear costumes. Costumes. And uh, sometimes uh, they forget to take them off and shower. So by the end of the weekend, it's a, a little right. Smelly. Yeah. It'd be a little yeah. right. Mm-hmm. And uh, so a fan came up to me and wanted a hug because I always want a hug. So I gave the hug. And then I must have just sort of just scratched my eye like that at one point on the Saturday. And uh, Saturday night, about four in the morning, I woke up with this tremendous burning <gasps> sensation. What and, was it? Well, I thought it was pink eye, but it was a uh, con eye, in fact. It was a little... <laughs> A <laughs> little infection. I've never I heard of up. con eye. No, well, I coined the term, see, so. Oh, oh, no. you coined the term. <laughs> convention Convention, eye. convention. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's the thing. I've heard some horror stories. And I'm not, I, I'm very friendly. I hope you can attest to that. I, I can. I, I am a personable person, but strangers, when they accost me, I'm not sure. You know do. what? Uh, the conventions I've been at, that's very rare now okay. because uh, the fans, they know, you know, the, and plus they've got, you know, you've got helpers and you've got mm. um, liaisons that are keeping the distance and stuff. Okay. 
It's a great time. Oh, Every tell convention me, dude, I've if, if I get asked next, it you have to be there. Definitely, because yeah. it is a party. It I don't think they want to see me, to be honest. That's 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 what, what you I'm thought thinking. about the show. As I soon know. as I announced you, the <laughs> the lines lit up with all these questions. Like, Trevor, nobody's gonna want to know about me. Oh, Forget so about sweet. it. You're oh. so self-deprecating. I know it's, it's a sickness. So so any sort of interesting moments at all from oh. your career that sort of jump out? If not, that's totally fine. I know my career has been nothing but a flatline blase. No, I mean each <laughs> job brings things like what I think about Zix Pat is just me pissing my pants for that two or three hours that we recorded because I got to watch you and Tabitha do the, the show. So, so you would say then a, a career highlight with for you would be urinating in a, in a session. <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> Here we go. No, I'd say each job brings its moments I, I, about a girl doing something I've never done before, like a, a comedy on air. Yes. Making out with cute boys in certain shows. That's maybe a hot. And no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, they're, they're, they're all great. I don't have favorites. I just have each one brings something. Something. Well, that that's the best answer. Yeah, I've and I, as you talked about, I'm lucky. I get two worlds. I do get the on camera, and I do get the the mm. voice. So every, everything's different. Three worlds, because you get real life too. Yeah, you know. But it's not much of real life in my. <laughs> we know. We know. For people out there, there's the running gag. I think in the industry about how much of a nerd I am. I, there's there's no real life. This I stay home and cook. That's uh, my life. A, don't let her fool you. This this chick's a party animal. No. I saw her the other night at Granville Street, stumbling around drunk with Shut holding up. one broken uh, high heeled shoe in a hand. Don't you dare for say a that. My dad will have a heart attack as we speak if he ever heard that. Hey, no. don't say this about yeah. a kiara. Yeah, what are you talking about? Like kicking your face and. For the longest time, I don't know why, I thought your name had an I after the Z. Ziani. I don't know why I thought that. No. I don't know why. Get it but right. It was, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> My dad would kill you. Get it on me. Get it right. It's a Ziani, not a Ziani. What is this? Um, so if you had any advice for people trying to break in the voice world at oh, any level. At any, so any age. Uh, yeah. I'd say definitely, definitely learn from the best, Trevor. Or somebody who has workshops or something where they can actually watch somebody in the business. Because I told you, on camera, people who, who are fantastic actors, they get in front of the mic and then they just, like you said, flatline. Watch somebody like Trevor or Sammy or someone who's really good at it and see that, that there is an actual craft to it. Um, so take a workshop and then build a library of what you can do because people always ask me oh how do I get into it and I say build a library and if if I think it's fantastic sure I'll pass it on to my agent or another agent but you've got to in such a short amount of time show what you can do mm -hmm. and so I'd say watch learn I'm all about mentors in this industry mm. watch learn have somebody to show you the ropes and uh, what about uh, advice for people trying to get like just doing on camera stuff is there oh. any is it different advice or uh... I mean, I'm kind of the person as you either got it or you don't. Mm. I know that's, we talked about this, I, you either got the talent or you don't. I don't think you could teach somebody to be a Meryl Streep. Mm. She's got it mm -hmm. in my book. I, I think there's there's things you can use from an acting class, but for the on camera world, I think it's different. I think you're born with it. I think you can, I think you can work on it in class. And it's a tool that you constantly need to use, but... Uh, if somebody at 40 would say, I'd love to be an on-camera actress, I'd say, take a class. See if you've got the knack for it. And then get an agent and start pounding the pavement. We've all been there. We all have to do it. Pay your dues yeah. like the rest of us. Yeah. It's a hard work. It's a hard work. It makes you sound like this after a while. <laughs> I'm old in this business. I've been doing this since I was eight. I My know. Gosh. She, she's here. She's, she's ancient time. now. She, she had to leave her walker out of sight. <laughs> oh my lord <laughs> Alright, let's hear what's in the mailbag Oh Martin's Mailbag <laughs> So, for those of you who, uh uh, haven't been with us, which is all of you, for the past nine months. <laughs> uh, Martin has uh, just given us a friendly re reminder as to where you can hear your favorite Vancouver voice actors on YTV and Teletoon. Currently on YTV, we have Being Ian, Robots, League of Super Evil, now with new episodes on Saturday morning, Kid vs. Cat, 
uh, also with new episodes on Saturday mornings. It's about time. And uh, Zeke's Pad. And on Teletoon, uh, George of the Jungle, Johnny Test, uh, and Hot Wheels Battle Force 5. Mm. Martin would like to remind the listeners that to hear more about, here we go, the lovely and very attractive here. Ah, I got another that's, word. Well, it's, it's right. It's not talented. Apparently, Martin doesn't think you're talented oh, at all, thanks, but Martin. very attractive. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, don't forget to look for her as Rachel Palmer in Zeke's Pad, mm-hmm. Piper in Stormhawks, mm-hmm. Hakudoshi, and Yura of the Hair in Inuyasha, right. uh, Hamtaro, Jubilee of X-Men Evolution, and the various Barbie movies. Now, yes. Martin would like to uh, lead off the question period oh, here. Oh, good. Speaking of Hamtaro, I have an unusual question. Did Kiara get overwhelmed with Hamtaro merchandise during the years the show aired? Um, and then he goes on to say, in terms of Stormhawks, from a business perspective, I can understand, but I still find it unfair. A Piper figure was never produced. I was angry. Shaking your I was fist at the heavens. Trying to think of a nice word. So <laughs> I was not happy that Piper didn't get a. S- you didn't get a, a no, figure. No. Did uh, did you get overwhelmed with Hamtaro merchandise? There was a lot. Yeah. I actually was in Germany um, on one of those crazy young, you know, eighteen tours where you had just graduated. Oh, wow. And I, you know, the Contiki pet- tour, yeah. drink there your you way go, across the Europe, puke your way across Germany. <laughs> <laughs> and I was in some like gas station, and I went to the bathroom, and I saw a Pez dispenser of Hamtaro. Oh my God! Pez dispenser. I still have it. it, it a German Pez dispenser. Yeah. Yeah. We love the yeah. hand yeah. We love <laughs> I don't to know crack any German. open its head. Let's this so there's lots Schwester. of stuff. With- uh, cool. Uh, all right. Let's let's begin the questions here. This one is from Philip, living in Texas, but from New Jersey. Texas. I've been to Texas. Texas down there, man. Land of the free, right down there, yeah. Lone Star State. Glad to have you back, Trevor. Although Richard's po- Richard uh, uh, Cox has another podcast. Oh. Uh, although Richard's podcast has kept me extremely entertained. Anyways, I did a quick <laughs> search of Kiara since I wasn't overly familiar with her. Oh, no! I know. How's that to start off? And what stands out to me the most is Yura of the Hair and mm. Hakudoshi from Inuyasha. Just wondering what you remember about those roles and what you liked the most. <laughs> Apparently you don't remember much of those roles. You don't remember you played Yura of the Hair. No, I don't. <laughs> but I do remember that it was a dark, a dark character my was character was quite period. evil she always wanted to he or she it was a question mark of what my character oh, actually a little was androgynous. um so it was Hot. very dark yeah um i don't really remember much <laughs> can we edit that out okay we can yeah yeah we'll edit that out Thank you. <laughs> uh for trevor i've been saving this one for what feels like years <gasps> Did anyone ever say you look like Hans Gruber from the first Die Hard movie? Has anyone? C- uh, no. Oh. Because I think you look like him. Could you do some lines as Hans if you remember? Anyway. Wow. Hans, I've honestly, I've been told I look like a lot of people, but Hans Gruber is not one of them. No. So, what is it the Americans say? A yippee ki mother There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see here. This next one is from Kate Lind with a D. She says, my God, that is one cute voice print baby. Aww. Referring, of course, to the last episode. Uh, we've been waiting for you forever. Now, Miss Kiarazani, mm. my question is, if someone would have told you when you were younger, as in pre-eight, that uh, <laughs> someday you were going to end up a voice actress, what would you have done? Jumped with joy? Or would you have said, what the heck is a voice actress? I probably would have done both. <laughs> What the, the hell, hell is, is that? But I'm going to do it anyways. <laughs> Which is pretty much how it happened. Exactly. So there you go. Uh, this is from Michael from Toronto. Uh, hi, Trevor and Kiara. Being a child of the 80s, I remember watching lots of animation that had public service announcements at the end of shows. Huh? Whether it be Transformers talking about traffic safety or G.I. Joe's talking about equality, they were all there. I noticed that with the rise of anime in the West, these public service announcements have all but disappeared from animation in general. Too true. If, if you had the chance to include a public Public service announcement at the end of one of the shows you worked on, which character would you choose to give the announcement, and what would the message to young people be? Keep up the awesomeness. I Michael feel like I'm on the Pyramid to talk sh- uh, game show, and this, the, the, the number is going down, and I'm timed, and I'm like, I can't do this, Trevor! This is the pressure! The no. bomb's gonna explode! No, there's nobody watching you. It's just you and me alone in the room. It's So fine. I have to be one voice for this public announcement? Uh, yes. Who, what character would you choose to give a public service announcement, and what would the message be? I can't do this. I can't do this. <laughs> well, let's see. I'll see if I can think of one. Um, uh, well, I guess um, 
I guess it would be Mordred Payne from Dragon Booster. And, okay. And what would his announcement be? Now remember, kids, listen to your mother, but not your father, because he's probably an evil overlord who's trying to prevent you from joining the elite class dragon racers, or something like that. I don't know. Does it have to be a real public announcement? Like, <laughs> the first thing that came to my mind was like, drink, you know, don't drink and drive. Like those are real. That... Yours wasn't real. What was that? What was that? Well, I don't know. It's me oh. trying to be clever. Oh. Okay, yeah. so don't drink and drive. Who would who would say don't drink and drive? <laughs> don't drink and drive. And Terrell? No, people would want to drink if they heard that. Um, maybe uh, I would probably be like Baby Petunia because she's cute, okay. and she would tell the you know parents not to speak. What would she say? Um, um, now don't forget, everybody, you really, really, really want to drive really slow when you're going home because there's kids playing outside and you don't want to hit them. <laughs> <laughs> she sounds drunk. <laughs> I well, couldn't remember what it's okay. She's driving. I couldn't remember what my ad was about. I said, what is this about again? <laughs> Where am I? Well, who is this? What? You can tell I'm an actor because I need a script. <laughs> I need lines in front of me. This one's uh, from Karen, also in Toronto. Hello, Trevor and Kiara. I'm a big fan of voice print, but I only started listening to it just after the Gary Chalk interview. Oh. So I'm quite pleased to see voice print is still up and running. Was he lovely and talented? He was lovely and talented <laughs> and not at all smoking, smoking hot, hot, let me tell you. Go on. Uh, I'm also a big fan of both your work, especially Kiara's live action stuff. Oh. Which brings me to my question of how is it balancing both a live action and a voiceover career? Is it often that you have conflicting schedules? And if so, which job would you usually take if you were torn between a live action role and a voice role? We were just talking we about this. We were just this. talking about this on the break. It's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. They're they're channeling us. Um, <laughs> it is hard. I'm not gonna lie. There are there have been moments where I had to do both, and I was telling Trevor I'd work a 16 hour day on set and then have to go into a recording studio and do that for uh, you know another two hours. So uh, and I wanted to pull my hair out. Um, but most of the time, thank God, scheduling for voice world is quite um, flexible so if I, I if I give them my on camera dates in advance and say the 16th and 17th she's on camera they'll usually work around it usually right um, and then the second part was do I have to choose uh, yeah which job would you take if you were torn between do I have a gun to my head? Do I have to choose? Yes, I think that if you read between the lines here, it says, oh, there it is. If you had a freaking gun to your head, which one would you pick? I, it depends on the part. If I was playing somebody who's getting killed on the Capilano Dam and crying. <laughs> the, uh, the Capilano Dam. Capilano. I'd probably say I'll take the voice job because it's fun. Right. It's fun. Right. right. Okay, well, that's good. And the hours are better. Yes, <laughs> way better. Yeah. Uh, hi, Trevor. Jonathan Choi here. Good to hear Voice Print is alive. Nine months is a long time. My question is for you and Kiara. If you had to retire from voice acting, oh. what would you do with all your free time if you didn't have to work? Well, i got to tell you, Jonathan, living as a voice actor you is... You have a lot of free time. <laughs> it is. It's essentially semi-retirement right here. Um I was talking with my class the other day because I teach oh. all over the place, and oh. I was talking with my class the other day, and they said, uh, "They said, you know, so so many actors we know they work just to 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 you know make it, and then they want to stop and just like." And I'm like, "Why? Why would you ever want to stop? stop. No. I don't understand. I want to drop dead in in the studio, not anytime soon. Not anytime but you know, I want to yeah. be like a hundred years old doing some character, and then, oh, Marv, get up! <laughs> I need you to get my I need drink you to of get, water. Oh. <laughs> Here's my opus. <laughs> and that's how I want to go. Yeah. So I don't understand how anybody would ever want to retire. And never. Never, never, never. What would you do with all your free time? The question is, what do I yeah, do with all my free time? What do you do? Well, what do I do? What do, what you, do? do you do? I uh, record I... podcasts for fans. Yes. <laughs> Apparently. Okay. What about you? I cook. Yes, you I do. Love Which cooking. I've never sampled. And uh, one of these days. I'm going to have to. One of these days. I love cooking. I love cooking. And I'm very active. So I'm usually running the seawall. You see me. Every time I see Kiara, it's not actually at work. It is she's she's <laughs> the running seawall. the seawall. I mean, I ran into you like 50 times this summer. I every know. day. Hey, it's What's Well, it's my backyard. And I, I, I'm very active. I'm not a girl that shops and does f prissy things. I'm outside. I'm not in the jungle, but I like to be outside <laughs> active. I saw her in the jungle, man. She's... Mowing down Charlie with an M60. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> uh, this is from Vic. Wow. Oh, thank you, Dr. Deval, for getting voice print out of the coma. I was about to give up and pull the plug, but you saved it just in time. Aww. I don't know what I would have done without it. Dedicated. Yes, very dedicated. Yeah, they like are very that. dedicated. Uh, 
fans. I noticed that each season of Voice Burn is about 12 episodes each. Eh, 10 or 12. Yeah. Uh, not counting episode 20, which is more of a multimedia exercise than an actual episode. So again, thanks for keeping the podcast alive, and please have a wait time of less than nine months. Um, now, enough rambling, and onto the actual question. It's a little less odd than my previous questions. Oh, oh I hate this one. Oh, no. If you were a character from Star Wars, who would you be? Dr. Duval, you can't pick Han Solo. Oh! Because that's, that's obviously... Okay, that's well... That's what I'd be, kid. All right. If you knew me well, you'd know that there's a little bit of a running gag in Vancouver. Um, people pick on me. I've never seen Star Wars. Ever. <gasps> I'm the one... I, have, you, have, you, have we talked about this? No, oh, this okay. is a revelation yeah. to me. Yeah, who is it? It's like... Everybody at Ocean, everybody in the voice world cannot believe I've never seen Star Wars. Not one. All right. I have a proposition for you. What? It's going to sound a lot like I'm Don't asking you Don't try and make me to watch it because I've, I've had people lend it to me at Ocean and I still no, haven't watched no. it. Here is my proposition. What? You and me, you are going to make some nice dinner. For the two of us. Yeah. And then after dinner, we're going to sit down. I'm not watching We're watching it. this movie. I'm yes, not we watching. are. We're watching the first one. You have to see. Is it a good? It's is it good? good. I is know. it I'm, I'm good? I'm killing everybody out there, aren't I? I've the, never seen it. The, we're talking like the original episode four back in 1977. Oh. We're talking the original full on. Oh. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Can I just say I'd be Princess Leia because I think she's cool? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've seen her on posters. <laughs> I know. Maybe um, I'll, I'll live a lifetime and, and actually be able to say I've never seen Star Wars. No, it's not going to happen. We'll see I'm about sorry. That. We'll I'm, see about I'm that. telling you. This is the proposition. We'll see. Well, it's the on the table. On. It's been the <laughs> next question. <laughs> anyway, who would I be from Star Wars if not for Han Solo? I don't know. Princess Leia. Uh, Princess Leia, yes. <laughs> I, I too. <laughs> Vic says he'd be Jar Jar because he hear he hears he comes with pickles pickles. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is from Elina. El El Elina, there's two eyes in that. I'm not sure if that's a misprint or I just don't know how to read it. Mm. How would you say that? L E L I I N A. Elina. 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 It is. Hello, Kiara. Apart apart from acting, I'm also a bit interested in directing. Have oh. you directed any show? And how did you land a gig? No, I've never directed. Never directed. And maybe eventually, I love I love the idea of it. Mm -hmm. mm, but I, I I'm I'm sure it has to be the right project. Does she mean on camera or voice? I she didn't she specify. Doesn't? Yeah, I don't know. I've directed some myself. Uh, I'm, film. You'd be great at it. And oh, thank you. Uh, some animation stuff too. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah. How did I land the gig? I landed the gig just because. Uh, well, my film directing career, I didn't land a gig. I, I produced it myself. Fantastic. Um, we won awards. We won <gasps> Leo Awards. It aired all over Canada. It what aired, was uh, it? It's a little short film called The Plaids. It was about uh, a guy who gets abducted by a couple of Scottish aliens. Well, I'll have, have to, to show it, it to yes. you. Yeah. Um, we did very well. It aired for three years on the Space Channel and Comedy Network. Holy. Yeah, it was crazy. Anyway, uh, this one's from uh, Nika. Hi, Trevor. I've been doing different voices since ever since I can remember. Oh. Along with acting, they are my two favorite things to do. Mm. Your show inspired me to join a workshop... Uh, a workshop film at my school, a film workshop at my school, and do background voice acting. I hope to someday move to BC from Ontario to pursue voice acting. Well, you know, you could just go to Toronto. Toronto, there's would be lots good. of stuff there. Uh, I absolutely love your show and would hope that you could ask Kiara a question for me. Sure. Is Stormhawk still in production? My friends and I have gone on Google and found nothing. We loved watching that show, and we are still hoping more episodes would come. So sadly, no. Sadly, no. I would love more episodes to come. I just don't think it had a right the right airtime. Oh, is that it's right? It's on YTV, but I don't. I think it's like at seven o'clock oh. p.m., and I don't think enough kids were watching. That's the death of a lot of shows. Yeah. Is the, the um, this time slot? Yeah, the time slot. Yeah. It's a killer. Uh, this is from Bill in Missouri, or Missouri, as I like to say. <laughs> Bill in Missouri. Uh, dear Trevor, good to see Voice Brand back. I found uh, found out about the show just when you went on hiatus earlier this year, and enjoyed listening to the old shows. It's always a pleasure to hear from the voice talent up north, since I enjoyed a lot of the ocean dubs like the Gundams, Black Lagoon, and of course, In the Yesha. As for guests, I'd like to hear from Lisa Ann Belay and Chantel Strand, if that's possible, since there doesn't seem to be many interviews with them. Great to hear Kirby and Sam on the latest show. Thanks, Bill in Missouri. Well, as a matter of fact, Lisa Ann Belay is going to be on the show. Fantastic. Yeah, another uh, episode or two. Uh, Chantel Strand, I could see what I could do. 
see what I can do. But certainly, yes, we. Uh, I am sort of hoping to work my way through uh, as many people as I can. All the women. Just make <laughs> all the women. All the women. All at once in a big sweaty room with nothing but but garbage bag bikinis to wear. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you steal my bikini idea. <laughs> this one uh, 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 is from Angela from lovely Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, long-time listener, first-time writer. First, of course, I must say that the show is awesome. Not only is it hilarious, it's extremely informative. I've been, in, uh, I've been interested in the world of voice acting for a long time, and your podcast sheds some light on the topic. Thanks to Voice Print, I now see the world of voice over as a possible career path. When you told us all about the production and engineering that goes on behind the actual voice acting, I went, hey, that's something I could probably get into. So thank you, VoiceBrint, for that, and thank you for making everyone's day better. Fantastic. Trevor, thanks for being our always intrepid host. VoiceBrint wouldn't be the same without you and your wacky humor. <laughs> when I saw that Miss Zani was going to be on the next, or was going to be the next guest, I wasn't completely sure who she was. <sighs> I apologize, but Haven't I we was... already heard that? <laughs> But I, was... I told you nobody wanted me as a guest. <laughs> but I was positive I'd heard her name before. So, being the clever fellow that I was, I googled her and saw she was Hamtaro. Yes. This is huge for me since that was one of my favorite childhood shows. To Kiara, yes. you're an amazing voice actress. Mm. And you're really pretty too. Aww. I recall in episode 26 when Trevor and the boys <laughs> what happened? had an ogling moment. <laughs> What happened? Oh, it was just right at the end. It doesn't really matter. So uh, both of you keep up the uh, great work. Don't leave the business anytime soon like Tony did. Aww. But if you do, you can totally make a podcast about lumbering. lumbering. <laughs> I'll still listen to it every day. Now some questions for the two of us. Number one, what is your favorite dessert? <gasps> Miss Italian Cook. Oh, there's so many. But if you had to put a gun to my head. Gun to your freaking head. It would be head. pie a la mode. So blueberry pie a la mode or apple pie a la mode. Very That's nice. Very nice. For me, crushed glass and baby parts on a pizza. Uh, what? Question... <laughs> question number two. What is your least favorite thing about the business? The sweaty headphones? The competition? The sweaty competition? <laughs> Working with Trevor Javon. Oh, yeah. And Kiara um, is just a nightmare. Oh, my I'm God. I'm a table. <laughs> I'm so I'm the quietest little mouse you can I know, imagine. I know. I, Come I, on. I have to tell you this too. I have to tell you this at home, guys. Uh oh. When we were doing Zeke's pad together, this was really the first time that we first, worked yes. in Intensive, the same room, in yes. the same yeah. studio. And uh, Kiara is extremely talented girl, but she's sitting there, very meek, reading her book, um, not laughing at my jokes. And, I was uh, inside. <laughs> And when you did the Chinese accent, I was always Oh, laughing. she's a very big fan of a Trevor <laughs> Devil do a Chinese man. <laughs> okay, sorry. So, so I would see Kiara sitting there and very meek and mild. And then, you know, it would get her, her turn to come up and do her character. And she would explode into action. And I've never been so impressed. Seriously. Oh. Like, I do reference you all the time when I'm teaching. Oh. Because... Uh, you you inhabit the character 100% when you get up there. Your whole body is into it. You completely transform. It's, it's maybe, uh, maybe I expect it's... to hear <laughs> when she gets up there because she's just going from one person to and another. And then I it's go fantastic. back to my little and nest. And then she goes back to her little yeah. nest and never laughs at any of my yeah. jokes. So. <sighs> anyway. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> What's your least favorite thing about the oh. business? Um, well, for voice world, there really is no least favorite. I mean, yeah, competition sucks. It really does having to audition, but there's no, nothing crappy. But even the competition is fine because you're working or you're, you're going you up love. against people. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's like your family. It's like your family. Yeah. One big happy family. When you get your arm, never up against you, but. Well, I could change that. I could, <laughs> I could pull a McNeil and try and play the girls, too. <laughs> on camera stuff, there's too much to say about all the crap yeah, that's exactly. on, so we won't go there. No, we won't go there. Um, hi, Trevor. Glad to see you're back. I got scared that voice print went into fod, fod paid. <laughs> pod, pod, pod fade. Aww. <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you for doing the show. I'm in college studying to be an animator, and your show keeps me sane on those long days, mm. especially when I have my pressing deadlines on my finals or huge projects. You probably hear this a lot, but you're an awesome person. Well, thank you very much. Uh, if this makes it into the show, I, and apparently it is, it is, I would hate to ignore your amazing guest, Kiara. <laughs> I love your work as Piper on Stormhawks. Cool. And she says, sorry, Trevor, because she knows that I'm so frustrated at not being on that show. And it was a cool show. <laughs> anyway, so this is from Kathy. That was from Kathy. And Kathy is the, the animator who sent me War Horse. I, I have to <gasps> you show you that. Yeah, fantastic. I am going to try and put that up on the website so you guys can all see this. It was fantastic. Um, 
This is from Craig. I'm dying to know what company is dubbing Dragon Ball Z Kai with Ocean Productions. For DBZ, I believe it was Westwood Media, but if they think Kirby Moore was too cool for Goku, as mm. Kirby said last week, it must be a different company. If you can find out or already know, please tell me, as it's very important to fans of the Ocean Productions dub of the Dragon Ball series. Do you happen to know if Dragon Ball has come I'm back no for sure? See, I haven't heard that it's happening yet. We did a bunch of auditions for stuff, uh, oh. but I haven't heard a thing I about it. So I, I can't help you, Craig. I don't know. I, I, if if I get on the show in some capacity, maybe I'll let you know. But uh, knowing how secretive Ocean is about stuff, I, I would be surprised if they allowed anybody to talk about it. I'm probably not even allowed to talk about it right now. Get some info. In fact, they're at the door right now. <laughs> they're coming for me. Uh, hi, Trevor and Kiara. First of all, great to have you back. Uh, almost forgotten just how brilliantly entertaining voice print could be. No, this is just a big ego fest wow, for me. I That's know, it's your so day. Great. Uh, episode 26 had me laughing so hard I could barely breathe once again. Um, I'm uh, extremely excited to hear Kiara, one Yay! of my childhood idols on voice print. My Little Pony Tales was the show that first got me interested in voice acting, and Bon Bon was one of my favorite characters. Oh, Bon Bon. I have a couple of questions I would like to ask. Uh, the first is aimed at your listeners as much as Kiara herself, as I don't really expect people to remember details about certain shows 20 mm -hmm. years later. Mm -hmm. On the subject of ponytails, there was an actor who seems to have played most, if not all, of the adult male voices in the show. He has a very familiar voice, which I know I've heard elsewhere, but since his name is not listed in the credits, his identity remains a mystery. A rumor spread across the web that it was Richard Cox, but I know for a fact I, I it's not it him. Is. Oh, really? I think it is. I there, remember him. There are some uh, clips on YouTube, uh, uh, and I would be gr very grateful to anyone who would ever listen and give me their thoughts. So you think it was Richard? I can, rec I can recall Richard being there quite a, quite a bit. Oh, well, maybe it was. Well, if anybody knows for sure, yeah. like Richard, <laughs> if you hear the show, yeah, let us know. Let us know. Um, Kiara, I've always loved and envied your distinctive voice. Mm. It's so youthful and somehow has more depth to it than most. Do you find that a distinctive voice helps or hinders in the voice acting industry? That's from Desiree. Good question. I think it helps um, and hinders because I was talking to Trevor about this. Because my voice is so unique, uh, it kind of stands out. Mm -hmm. And there's what I love about my voice is it's quite childlike and it is youthful. And that's where it hinders me when they say, oh, Kiara, we need to throw in another character. We need a mom voice. And I know there's no flipping way I can sound like a mom. <laughs> this is 12-year-old Kiara, and this is probably what she, and younger. She's not going to... I can't do mothers. I can't do the old, older, you know, okay, Betty, let's sit down and we're going to eat your dinner and your peas and your carrots. That's okay. Uh, it's, it's, That's it, okay. I try. I try. What if you go deeper? What if you use your diaphragm, Rizani dear? Okay, Betty. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like part man. <laughs> okay, Betty. Okay, Let buddy. me teach you about bras. Yeah. So I think it hinders me in the sense where when I need to be the more mature sounding voice. But what I love about my voice is it is unique. So it will stand out. And I well, probably will be 50 and still playing an eight-year-old kid. Well, uh, I agree. I I like your voice, too. <gasps> Thank you very it's much. pretty good. Thank you. This is from Justin. Wants to know if we could interview Andrew Francis since Tony Sampson quit oh, voice acting. Oh, yeah, Andrew. He's so cute. I'm sure I'll have Francis on yeah. here. The young girls will love him. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure I will, Justin. Um... If, if he can find the time, he's so busy. He is. Such a busy little man. Uh, okay. Um, oh, are we? Are we at the... We are. We're at the end. We're at the end. This is the final question. Greetings to you, the voice actor who can make the impossible possible. <sighs> I, Jeff, have a question or two for both yourself and your guest, Kiarazani. When voicing a character, where is the line for how much creative control you have over a character when doing both ADR and prelay? More specifically, how much you're allowed to mold the character's personality in relation to what the writers originally intend for the character. For example, Mr. DeVal, <laughs> call me Trev. I'm a big fan of your work in Gundam 00 as Patrick Colasauer. Gushing aside, I think you nailed the character, and I checked the original version to see how the original voice actor voiced him in comparison, and it was quite a bit different. But between you and me and the other thousands of podcast listeners, I thought your variation was much better. <laughs> uh, so, how much... Um, how much you allowed to mold the character's personality in relation to what the writers originally intended. Like in anime, for example, because uh, I rarely hear the original and never. Japanese. I never. Almost never. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the only time we hear the OJ is when they... Uh, when we get the job and we can actually hear it underneath. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but uh, how much freedom do you feel you have in ADR to create the character? Do you feel... I think we 
have a lot of freedom. Yeah. I don't think we're restricted by the previous voice. I mean, I'm trying to think. Hamtar- I don't even know what Hamtaro sounded like. In Japanese? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I think there's quite a bit of freedom. What, what, what do you think? I think so, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, more so in Prelay. Yes. Oh, God, yeah. Because Prelay, of course, they animate around what we do, uh, whereas ADR is already, ADR is already done. Mm-hmm. So we have to act within very specific visual parameters mm-hmm. with ADR. Also, the character has already been created in True. a way with ADR. So we have to uh, adjust our character voice and our character attitude to what we're seeing on screen. Mm-hmm. Whereas on Prelay, they draw it based on what we bring to the table. Right. So it's, a, it's a bit of a... add our own essence. Yeah. So typically, I think we have more creative control than Prelay, mm-hmm. but not by much. Not by much. We're talking like 2%. Yeah. Maybe 2%. 2.5%. And finally, how big of a factor is natural talent when it comes to being a good voice actor? I think it's huge. I said that already. Yes. I don't think you... I think you're born with this. I really do. Is there a way to learn, though? Because uh, yes. David Kay used to say that, uh, you know, when he started, he didn't feel he was very good and he was a terrible actor, but he had the pipes. He had the pipes. Like, hey, pipes. And then he learned. And now, well, we know where oh. he is. He's, he's Mr. La La Mr. La Big. Yeah. La La Land. I think you can teach. Well, you tell me. You have g- g- courses, and I'm sure people come in that are green but have amazing quality and can change their voice. But um, you can't teach me to sound like your crazy male voices. I just can't do that. Right. Yeah, there's only so many ways the vocal cords can actually stretch. Correct. So, but in terms of the actual uh, uh, characterization and understanding how to act, can you teach that? To, well, to a degree. To a degree. What do you think? I think you do have to be born with some innate understanding mm-hmm. of it. But I also think a lot of people never know if they have that understanding True, because most really people don't, yeah. don't exactly grow up saying, I'm going to be a voice actor. Most people yeah. don't. Most, be- most people fall into this business from somewhere else. True. I mean, you're an exception to this, but most people come to it from somewhere else and they never get a chance to try. It's true. So a lot of people have no idea. Like I've seen uh, students who have come to the microphone and it, originally they're like, oh, I don't even know what this is. And then they start and they're like, this wow. voice actor emerges, and I'm like, oh, well, you never know. You got the chops, You got the chops. There's some hidden talent in there. Hidden talent in there. Anyway, thanks for all the questions, guys. See, I told you there was a million questions. There was a few. There were more for you, but that's okay. No. It was your show. No, there was just, just praise for me. <laughs> that's all. Thanks for all the questions, guys. Um, this brings us to, to the, the end of episode well, I got 27. Through it. You have no idea, people, how nervous I was. <laughs> I was, like, for Clint to come in here. I was like, I don't think I can do this. And now you see how easy it was. It was easy, Breezy. We're just two guys, it's two because... regular guys stuck in Are you calling me a guy? I'm, I'm saying with a couple a of regular smoking hot fellas. guy? Smo- <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a couple of smoking hot guys. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. I'd, find, uh, I'd do this again. I think I could do it again. Okay. In well, another four or five years. I'm... <laughs> Gotta build the resume, right? I'm actually thinking about going with a slightly different format in in the Ooh. future, uh, for some variety. Maybe have a bunch of guests back. That would be fun. And doing a little sort of politically incorrect uh, kind of round table thing. And I just can do that. Seeing and really not necessarily limiting questions to the business, but just just talking. I have to come out of my shell a little bit. Oh, you already have. You've. Isn't she fantastic, people? Wasn't she? Isn't she romantic? <laughs> Isn't she lovely? Okay, there. I Very nice. It's my gar- okay, gotta go get the garbage bag. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been a delight. It was delightful. Uh, you've made a lot of fans very happy. Thank you. And uh, you've made me very happy because this is uh, means that voice break is back. back and back. it is back. Uh, I'm back in the saddle, back in the swing of things. Uh, and our next guest <gasps> is... How are you going to describe them? The Let's lovely hear it. Oh. and talented. Oh. And I'm sure there's many other words that could go in there too. You know him. You love him. You've waited for him a long time. Our next guest, Mr. Paul Dobson, completing oh, the Dobson one. Trio. Doom, so, doom, doom. as always, send in your questions for Paul to voiceprint at Uh Any questions, concerns, or comments can also be sent to me at that address, or, as well, fans at trevordevalle.com. And there, of course, is the link to that email address on the website. That's it for me. That's it for Kiara. Ciao! That's it for Voice Print. Thank you so much, and we will see you on the flip side. <laughs>